All right, gentlemen, we're soon going to start the first round of debates. The first round will be uh, Prince Sultan University uh, going up. What was the, who was the opponent? Uh, King, King Saud University, and they are here. That's going to be our first round. A quick reminder of the rules. I believe everybody received the rules, but it would, just for making sure everybody understands, obviously the pro is going to be on this side, the con will be on that side. The speakers, stand up at your seat and speak from here. There will be these portable mics. You won't need, do not come to this podium. Apart from this part right here, we're really not going to need this podium. Now that being said, gentlemen, you are public speakers. You are debaters. This is a small room. I expect every one of you to be able to fill this room without using a microphone. So let's not, sometimes the technology can simply get in your way. I will be acting as the timer, and the time constraints are these. The time, the clock starts when you say your first word. After the previous speaker, you're allowed a good 30 seconds to think. Also, the judges will be writing comments. You don't have to immediately stand up and speak. You can if you want. Once you say your first word, the clock starts. Then I will be holding up cards. When we hit three minutes, you see a green card. When we hit four minutes, you see a yellow card. You want to stop by five minutes. At five minutes, you will see a red card. You can keep going after five minutes. Points will be subtracted. When 5.30 hits, five minutes and 30 seconds, you are going to hear my cell phone start beeping. And it's going to keep beeping. It means be quiet and sit down. You're done. There is no minimum time. If you stand up and speak for 10 seconds and sit down, no problem. You just won't get any points. But there is no minimum you have to worry about. You are strongly encouraged to finish speaking before five minutes. Prince Sultan University has provided a, what we call a team. In case a certain team cannot compete, but the other team is ready to go, our B team is going to come up and debate you. The B team is not in competition. The B team will not be getting points. The B team will simply allow the other team to compete and make their own points, because we all know you can't debate by yourselves. Uh, as everybody knows, there's bracket A, bracket B. The winners of bracket A and the winners of bracket B by points will go on to the finals. One thing we want to make sure you understand, when the first two teams of bracket A are speaking, the other two teams of bracket A will be escorted out into the hall so they can't watch and basically steal our wonderful ideas. Same thing's going to happen with bracket B. And with bracket B, there's going to be three rounds. The first team will debate. The first two teams will debate. The other four teams will be outside. When you're finished debating, you can stay. You don't have to leave. The second set of teams will come in. They will debate. Then they can sit down. The third set of teams will come in. They will debate. They will sit down. No props. You may not use any kind of props, any kinds of tools, any kind of display objects whatsoever. You can have paper. You can have notes. That is acceptable. That is fine. Are there any further questions? Yes. Just note paper, no, no newspapers, no magazines. Uh, papers like this, index cards. Show me that. Fine. Excellent. No problem. Good. Any other questions? Uh, Prince Sultan team, is there anything you think I need to add? If not, I believe we are ready to begin the first round. May I have the Prince Sultan, Sultan team and the King Saud team please join us on the stage. Yes, uh, two things. One, we, these microphones are on. When your team is not speaking, turn it off. Because when you're sitting here listening, speaking to your, with your opponents, uh, speaking with your friends about, hey, we got to tell that other point, turn this off. Now turn it back on only when you're speaking. And I made a hideous error that I'd like to apologize for. I did not introduce our esteemed judges. 
Our first judge is Mr. Ali Al Shedi. Oh, thank you. Our first judge is Mr. Ali Al Shedi from the King Abdulaziz Center for National Dialogue. He is the head of the media of uh, excuse me, the media of Salam Project. Thank you very much, Mr. Ali. Our next judge is Mr. Mohammed Abdul Badi. He is the senior teacher at the Indian School in Riyadh and the operator of very good program. One of our most experienced debate judges. Uh, also, the third judge is Mr. Sajid Pariyaya. Yaya? Sorry for my second. He is the head of the database section of the Atomic Energy Corporation, and he is an experienced co-censor with a great deal of experienced judges. All of our judges are experienced contest and debate judges, and we are very lucky to have them. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for taking time out of your busy work days and coming here. Another round of applause, please. And at this point, for the judges' benefits, I would like each guest to introduce yourself. Just give your name. And first, who's, is first, second, third? Okay, first give your name, please. Uh, my name is, uh, I'm sorry. Turn it on. Uh, my name is Saad Kudayan, and I am representing the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia debate team. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. My name is Ali Mutani and I'm proudly representing my esteemed university, King Saud University. <coughs> my name is Abdurrahman Shisbei and I'm representing King Saud University and I'm the third speaker. Thank you. Prince Sultan University. Uh, I'm Farouk Khaled, I am the second speaker for the Prince Sultan team. <coughs> Uh, representing uh, Prince Sultan University as the third speaker. Alright, if you gentlemen would just give us one minute for the judges and the timer with me to get set up. We'll be ready to go. I'll give you a signal. start their own businesses immediately after immediately after high school and the arguments that support this motion is that is that the kingdom of Saudi Arabia's vision for for the for 2030 is built around three visions the first vision is that it promotes a vibrant society a um, and a thriving economy that ultimately leads that ultimately leads to an ambitious nation. <clears throat> students would contribute students would contribute more to the kingdom if if they start a business sooner. And the prime example for, for this argument is Maestro's Pizza, which I'm sure almost everyone is aware of. <clears throat> and the second point that 
supports this motion is that entrepreneurship is good for economic growth. The abundance of startups, <clears throat> the abundance of startups translates more into more competition, <clears throat> more jobs for our countrymen, and a more productive nation. Again, prime example for the second argument is my first pizza. <clears throat> and in conclusion, we do believe, or rather we wholeheartedly believe, that the best way to promote entrepreneurship is for students to start their own businesses immediately after receiving their high school degrees. And 2030 supports this motion as well as, well as the jolt to the economic growth that comes with this vision. Thank you. Factories in the factory 
from 450 to only 70. This is how simple jobs are very risky. So we go back, what happens to, to those high school students once they graduate, once their business fail? How are they going to survive? Even if they manage to find a single job, I don't think that job will ever pay even with their living expenses. In conclusion, achieving vision 2030 requires raising a generation of capable engineers, programmers and business analysts Therefore, we have to encourage our young generations to achieve their true potential through higher education. So once they start their business journey, they are standing on the solid ground of knowledge and science. So let us all work together to raise the next generation of creative thinkers, of innovators, and of successful entrepreneurs. Come to church. I'd like to first say that our, our opposition contends the claim that if, if an entrepreneur does not succeed at his first business, it means that he's got nowhere to go. And this is obviously a straw man logical fallacy. He's assuming things not based on the first presupposition. Obviously, you know, my first point to counter this, you know, this actually strengthens my argument, is that entrepreneurship is done, not taught. The art, business is a game of life. You can't, you can't teach business. Even if you give someone a PhD, go to the London Business School, get an MBA there, they'll only teach you case studies, they'll only teach you past businesses, how they succeeded. But how to make your own business, I don't believe that that's quite the case, and I don't think you're actually gonna pay back the loans that you gave them, you know? So, in a way, they're the successful business, and you're just uh, another consumer. And for my... For my first argument, I'd like to say that, you know, in light of their statistics, I'd like to approach a more human side of business. Entrepreneurship makes us happy as people. You know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for free market capitalism, and, you know, when, when you, for example, go out there and buy an iPhone, it makes you feel happy, it makes Apple feel happy, and Steve Jobs now is just happy, you know, wherever he is. Um, and business, and business people, when they're young, they have the ambition, they have the idea of risk in their head. They're not afraid of that. And if you're afraid of that, and you have that fear that's like, oh no, I'm going to fail. You shouldn't start a business, you should go to school and maybe hope that you'll get a job. And then you're going to... See, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are the people who work for you, and there are the job creators. People who start entrepreneurs are the job creators. And an entrepreneur like uh, Khaled Al Amran, the person who made Maestro Pizza, he had an idea, he made it, he took the risk in light of all the uh, top 1% pizza companies, Pizza Hut and Domino's, and he succeeded with his low prices. And the act of conducting business is simple. Yet placing and creating a system that does conduct business autonomously is difficult. No university can teach you how to run a successful business. It is only filled with outdated case studies. And an example of this is driving a car. Imagine telling a five-year-old how to drive a car, let alone run a business. You can't tell a five-year-old how to run a business. How can you expect an 18-year-old out of high school, you know, especially when there's no entrepreneurship education? You know, I'm not sure about today, but in, in university, they're teaching you how to be an entrepreneur. You know, you can't make it a science. You know, as we all know here, the act, the, do, the act of doing came before the science. People didn't have a science to follow, they just did it. They looked at the market and say, okay, this is what we need, supply and demand, economics 101. And in conclusion, I believe that the best way to promote the economy and make everyone else happy is for, for students after completing high school, immediately taking that risk and
starting their own businesses. Thank you. Could everyone please remain quiet while the speakers are speaking? As judges, are you ready? Yes. My opponent, my opponent talked about how an 18 years old isn't ready for the world of entrepreneurship and that he should do university, which thank you for signing with us, opponents. Let us start by defining entrepreneurship. An entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. Risk is an exposure to danger, harm, or loss. Do those three things go into the same sentence as a 17 years old? What is the hardest thing a high schooler has to go is exposed to? Choosing the font Times New Roman size 12 or size 16 for his PowerPoint presentation. Honorable opponents, distinguished judges, my first point for today is about the networking opportunities that a university provides. Entrepreneurship is not a solo feat. You will need connections. You will need to expand your network. I will bring some, I will mention some real life examples of people we all know about, of entrepreneurs who have changed the world, whose success stories are mentioned and talked about every single day. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, what do they both have in common? They both started their multi-billion dollar organizations with a partner they met in a dorm room or a class. Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook as a project for one of his courses. Would they have had that spark had they not gone to university? Now, before the proposition holds, me, holds this against us, I know that these people have dropped out of university but they only did so after achieving the main goal of a university, which is not to give you a bachelor's degree, but to give you the higher education required to become a successful person. A university provides you with unavailable knowledge, unlimited resources, and countless opportunities, such as this debate itself. Would I have had the honor to participate in an event of this caliber had I not enrolled in my institution? We are all for entrepreneurship. We just believe it's better to do so after gaining the knowledge from your uh, the, un, the invaluable knowledge from your professors. <clears throat> Universities nowadays are working very closely with organizations to make sure that their students are ready for the real world of entrepreneurship, something a high schooler is not ready for. Which brings us to my second point: Are high schoolers ready for the real world of entrepreneurship? In 2016, the U.S. Bureau of Labor mentioned that 2% of their 5% uh, of their unemployment rate consists of people with a high school diploma, while as over 16 million people who are unemployed, while as only 2% are of people with a college degree. They also mentioned that people with a college degree gain 60% more income than a person with a high school uh, certificate. Now, these are all statistics about jobs and not entrepreneurship, which is the main topic today. But we are not against entrepreneurship. We are just for entrepreneurship after getting, gaining the, the skills and the connections from the university, and not immediately after high school. Thomas Portsey, CEO of MFV and one of Forbes Top 100, said, entrepreneurism is a 24-7 job. Is a high schooler ready to, to be isolated from the friends he graduated with, from the family he has lived his entire life within, to, to fully devote himself to entrepreneurship and starting his new business? I don't think so. A study of 500 new businesses found out that the one started by a college graduate earned twice the revenue and has double the number of employees as one started by a high school uh, student. Finally, to summarize my points, we believe the connections gained in universities are crucial and compulsory to become a successful entrepreneur. The, and the higher education you learn there is an integral part of surviving the real world of entrepreneurship. Nowadays, universities are offering funds or grants for students who show excellence or have great business ideas. The Collegiate uh, Entrepreneurs Organization offers resources and education for people who are in the last year of college to start their own business. You don't have to do so after high school. You need the connections and then you can start your own business. 
So finish your education. Instead of getting a loan, get a job, get a paycheck or three, and then use that to start your business. Thank you. First off, I'd like to start with that the, um, uh, our team were talking about the how it's good to uh, be uh, to start entrepreneurism after high school. So you immediately start entrepreneurism, and then you can also go to a university and study there. We are not against going to universities. Also, to be into entrepreneurism, to get into it, that supports our vision 2030. We, uh, that. <coughs> When you support that, you support the economy of the country. You're supporting your own nation. That's what we, as a nation, as Saudis, are uh, what we can do to our, to our government. That's how we can help them. And also, about them, what they said about Bill Gates and uh, Mark, they went to uh, Harvard University, not any university. So, Harvard University of Higher Education, Someone that can get into Harvard University is a person who is of higher intellect, maybe, or he's just above average. Also, this university requires a, a higher institution, so not anyone can get into it. It's not, not a, an average person can get into that university. Also, they, they drop out of the university, yeah, correct. But um, they, the, they, they first get into it. They needed a lot of money for higher institution in uh, Harvard University. They risked that. They had. Uh, they risked getting all of that money and then getting into that university. So I don't believe in that argument about Bill Gates being in the university. Also, I'd like to say that. Um, start a business after high school, you risk it, yeah, but you, if you risk it, you can still go to university after that. So, there is no, it's a risk, yeah, but if you have someone supporting you, if you get me, if you, get, if you have someone supporting you, maybe if you have relatives, it's not that much of a risk. If you don't have parents, if you don't have relatives, yeah, it can be a lot of risk. Also, and, uh, Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurialism isn't taught, so you need to do that, you need to get into that first, so you, you learn that by yourself, you learn that by doing it, you don't learn it by lectures and it's, it's a skill you gain from, uh, from doing this thing, it's not just reading books and you can, you get, oh yeah, I have this idea and this, you can have that, yeah, but it's more about doing the thing, it's more about doing than teaching. And also, <coughs> yeah, if you have, even if you have like one of the best professors teaching you this business, teaching you entrepreneurism, you, you may not succeed. It's not all about education, it's about experience. If you experience this and you go and do it yourself, you, you may risk it, yeah, but you can learn. You can, maybe you will fail, yes. You have a chance of failing. Everyone can fail. Even if you uh, study at a university, yes, you can fail. If you study at a university, you're not uh, guaranteeing success. No. You need to risk it even after. And um, <coughs> if you risk it, you can, also, you can always fail. But then you start up back again stronger. See? You can fail once, twice, Three times, yeah, but you keep going, you don't stop. If you stop, then that's your loss, to be honest. But <clears throat> if you keep 
going, yeah, you can, you can, if you fail once, you can go to university, even learn, but if, you can try again, you can try three times, four times, it doesn't matter, just keep going, yeah, keep going, you keep doing the thing, maybe someday you will succeed, you have a higher chance of succeeding, if you experience, if you have experience, you have a higher chance of succeeding, if you experience, uh, if you have run one in the business, you experience that business and you maybe fail. You start a new business with a better idea. So this this can make you a better entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur. And thank you everyone.
The third speaker, he talked about Vision 2030. What is Vision 2030? What does it want? It wants to provide free education. It wants to have a successful economy. That's what we are for, right? We are talking about better entrepreneurs. We are talking about entrepreneurs who have more knowledge than a high school kid. So we are for Vision 2030. Another thing he went on and on about Harvard and how they had a lot of money. It's not a, it's not a logical point, but even if you remove the Howard out of the picture, every university provides you with the necessary skills. Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, even though they haven't attended university to their uh, complete level, they have sent their students to the university. With that, I will conclude by saying that as a university student, as a student who did not have to start business after high school, nothing is going to hit as hard as life. And high school kids need to come to terms with that, and university provides with all the education as my mates have told you the four important points. With that, I end and thank you. At this point, we will take two or three questions from the audience. Uh, first from the judges and our worthy VIPs, but second from the other people in the audience. The teams will have two minutes to prepare their answers. One student from each team will answer all the questions. Each team gets to pick which student will take the questions. So, do we have any questions from our judges or our, or our VIPs from uh, for either team? Thank you. I have a simple question. Does maturity have anything to do with it? I'm 18 years old. Is he mature enough to take that responsibility or not? Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Judges, do you have any questions you'd like them to follow up on? Education is an important tool, and you cannot deny that when you go for any business. Your opinion, please. One more? Uh. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, you are just uh, talking about some figures in the world. Uh, those team who are supporting uh, education in order to start your business. How about Araj? He has no education whatsoever. Okay, and he now he is a millionaire. How would you tell us that education is very important for business to create your own business? Thank you. Yes, uh, if we just can we imagine that every high school graduate will take that opportunity to have or to start his own business. Does that mean all, of course, minimizing students going to universities? If this is the concept, do is there any uh, reasonable example that reflect or support the idea of high school graduates are doing much better starting their own business at an early stage rather than another, on the other hand, the percentage at a university level starting their own business. Is there a percentage-wise, is there a statistic that supports your ideas, whether they are at a university level or at a high school level? An example, of course there is an isolated situation as Dr. Abdullah mentioned right here. But that's one in a billion. You know, it's not like a, it's not it's not the norm. That's an exception. Thank you. Gentlemen, you have two two minutes to uh, decide your answers to both the questions. Uh, <coughs> Pro will go first in two minutes to think. Pro will have two minutes to speak, and then Khan will have two minutes to speak. 
they, they answer all the questions or to, to the best of your ability. Two minutes. Seconds left. Red card comes, we'll give you a little time to wrap up. 
you, we're not going to disqualify you for it. When you see the red card, please wrap up and sit down. What is the total time? Two minutes. Does education teach us maturity? You are taking many classes. You are forced to do time management. You have to organize your commute, food, and be independent and responsible. I think those are all perfect examples of maturity. A university makes you a master of all, of, uh, a master of some trades, which we are changing the example. When you are a master of some trades, you have a backup plan. You have a backbone, something to go back on. You know you are in safe. You are in safe waters. If you make a mistake and miss your opportunity, you're not dead. You have many other things to go on. And to answer another question about stats, uh, I mentioned that 500 businesses were studied, and a college graduate had doubled the revenue and doubled the employees uh, from a high school graduate. And also, uh, Arashi was uh, Mr. Arashi was a successful entrepreneur in a time when we needed entrepreneurs. When we didn't have bankings and financing, we needed Mr. Arashi. Now the world is very complicated and entrepreneurs are, you go left and right and they're all over the place. We, it's very complex and hard and Mr. Arashi is one in a billion example, which we hope we can all become. <clears throat> if education is not necessary, then why are there millions and maybe possibly billions of people in Africa and around the world who are poor because they don't have education. They, why, do, why are less entrepreneurs coming out from less developed countries? Because they don't have education. And we are speaking to the future entrepreneurs in this auditorium. We are speaking to the future Mr. Arashi, hopefully. The one in a billion will come from this auditorium. And all these stats, we are using the stats to see what has happened in the past instead of experiencing that ourselves. I can take entrepreneurship 101 and see what all these previous people have done in mistakes instead of doing them my own and failing. Why would I do that? Mr. Arashi has already done that for us. He has already paved the way for future entrepreneurs. Thank you. Both teams, thank you very, very much. Let's give them all a round of applause. three, four minutes to prepare, allow the judges to get their forms, and then the next two teams will be debating, and that is uh, Shakra University, oh, excuse me, no, I'm sorry, uh, Prince Satam bin Abdulaziz University on the pro, and Dar al Alum University on the con. Uh, could those teams please go ahead and take the stage and get themselves comfortable?